Uh, I'm an educator and uh, I'm also a performer. So um, I perform in front of my students and uh, I also perform in front of my kids. So today what I'll do is basically tell you a story. So it's going to be a story of my life and then a story of my kids. Uh, but in everything I'm going to be doing, it still points out to that it, it is okay to be different and then it's okay if you're the outlier. So the, the photos you see there um, are photos of my kids. I have three wonderful kids. And on this photo, there is one person that you see that is constant there. And that is the little man there. You see him pulling his sister there? And that's exactly what he does every time. So his name is Samuel Alex, but he likes to be called Baby Alex. And Samuel Alex is, or I'll say Baby Alex, is like none of my other kids. Um, he is totally different. Um, he's a screamer. You know, he wants something, he's screaming. You tell him, stop screaming, he screams more. You know, and, and recently, he did something that his mom was really proud of, about. I mean, what a three-year kid would normally not do. And his mom said, you know, baby, you're really connecting the dots. And that phrase stuck to him. And now, anything he does at home, he says, mom, I'm connecting the dots. And for him, doing a good thing is connecting the dots. And so, baby Alex is different, but then it's really okay that he is different. He's, he doesn't have any physical deformity or any um, medical diagnosed illness, but he's just different. And we've learned to accept that he is different from his other kids, and then that is actually okay that, uh, that, uh, that, that each and every one of them have different aspects and then different um, um, personalities. I like this movie a lot. Uh, it's one of my all-time favorite movies. You know, it's called The Pursuit of Happiness. And the phrase, The Pursuit of Happiness, it comes from the U.S. Declaration of Independence. And most times, the way I see The Pursuit of Happiness, uh, I kind of associate it to every one of us. We're all, pursuing, we're all pursuing success. We're aspiring to be successful. As an educator, I'm proud when the, the, the students or my students turn out to be successful in whatever thing they, they, they aspire to be. So success has become something that we kind of connotate or associate with being happy. And for that, what that has happened is that so there is, uh, it makes us subscribe to one formula. And that one formula is that for you to be happy in life, you have to be successful. And what that has made us do is that we want every student to be successful in a sense that we've kind of had this one formula that if you don't grow up to go to a university, become a medical doctor, a lawyer, an engineer, you know, one of those top um, careers that we've built up over the years thinking that that is where the top achievers are, then we feel like, okay, you are a failure in life. So, We've not really helped kids to understand that there are different pathways to, su to, to being successful. And happiness does not just come from the one-way formula. So Albert Einstein put it well. He said, the, the person who follows the crowd will usually go no further than the crowd. The person who walks alone is likely to find himself in places no one has ever seen before. So there is, there is something different in each one of us. And then, um, until we begin to realize that we're all different, and then even as educator or even in life, the people we meet, that basically uh, each, each of us stand, uh, have different things, and then we have things that makes us different. Now, I'll just tell you something. If you take a moment, you know, make a mental uh, picture or just do a reflection of yourself, each and every one of you, and then just do a men take a mental note and tell yourself, why am I different? I mean, you will come out to see that there are different thoughts that makes you feel you're different from the person who sits next to you. Obviously, I'm different from every one of you because I'm probably the only one who is from Africa here, right? I look different from every one of you. So that is being different. But again, 
besides geographical differences, we all have different things that makes us different. It could be our talent, you know, it could be um, the, the different gifts we've had. And so what I'm telling you that it is really, and it's really okay, absolutely perfect that we all have, we are, that we are all different in, different in different things and in different ways. You know, my, my parents will always tell me that the five fingers are not equal. And so what that means is that there is no identical or absolutely the same people all in the world. So you are uniquely who you are. And I know a lot of the speakers who have come up here have spoken about, you know, curriculum, looking at the past, talking about the present. You know, I think one of the speakers came here and then outlined, you know, the different things that has not been taught in school. But I also think that one of the things that we failed to, you know, like we failed to bring into the school is the ability to make every child feel that um, you're not a failure, you know, whatever you've chosen to do, um, at what level that you've, you've be, whatever, whatever you've been able to achieve, it's absolutely okay, you know. And I, I like this word, outlier. You know, the first time I came up with this word, outlier, was when I, was, uh, when I had my MBA. And that was, uh, I think, four years ago. And I remember my research statistic um, professor kind of was teaching us something on statistics and hypothesis. And then she put this word, uh, she, she kind of put a, a graph. I'll show you that much later. And then uh, on the graph, there's one that stands out, you know, and said, that's an outlier. And for those of you who are mathematicians, you will understand what I'm saying. Like, when you want to make a graph, you want the whole points to align, you know, to give you a straight line. But then uh, there's always that one, I mean, sometimes, and um, st statisticians will tell you that that is outside of the normal, right? But again, that thing they call outside of the normal, I'm saying that it has a place. You know, there is no abnormality. There is no outside of the normal student. There is no outside of the normal student. As individuals, there is no outside of the normal. Because we each, each and every one of us have our own place, you know. So, but the, the, it's, an outlier is defined as a person who is, whose uh, residence and place of business are at a distance. And then there's a second definition that says a person or a thing that is atypical within a particular group, class, or category. Now, um, the word outlier, and then from the definition, you see that we can actually associate outlier with someone who, um, say, someone who probably is a diaspora, or someone who does not fit into what we've defined as a typical class. Now, but I said that most times what we, bas what we want to do is that we're trying to, and this is even what mathematicians and statisticians will do, is that they're trying to find a way to bring that outlier into that, to fit in into that line, you know? And what that does is that you kind of take away from the originality and now you're trying to recreate something into what it, it, it shouldn't be. So, but I'm saying that originality always wins against imitation. You know, so it's always okay. And then um, I was reading, I was reading a recent article, and then I came up something uh, written in, in 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 one of the posts by by a journalist called Matthew Kent, and he says, if you don't like the story you're telling yourself, you tell a different story. Um, and then uh, someone also said, what I'm good enough, uh, so what I am is good enough if I would only be it openly. So the point I'm trying to say is that most times when we see that person that doesn't uh, fall in line or doesn't uh, become what we think we want it to be, we try to recreate it into being something else rather than re letting it be the original self, you know? And, and so... Remember, nothing is ever permanent. No one is ever the same. You know, the things that we think is right now might not be what would be right, you know, um, um, in, a, in, in a year or in two or in several other years coming. So, um, it says, remember always that you're not, uh, that you not only have the right to be an individual, you have an obli obligation to be one. So, individual here means that we, each of us, exist as individuals, rather, rather than as collect, collectivism. And then, um, I said I'm an educator, 
I teach the subject called individuals and society, and I also teach global politics. And then what, what as an expert in this sphere, what it has taught me is that, you know, each of us, we exist as individuals. And then because we all exist as individuals, we're able to, to form, you know, uh, so we should be able to maintain an individualistic approach to things that we do, rather than a collective one. You know, because collectivism would only lead us to become more people who only want more. And, and there's a saying that talks about the mob mentality, where everybody subscribes to one type of thinking, you know. But again, that is not always the perfect way to see things. You know, it's always good that we stand out as individuals because that is when we are able to shine through and then our talents can come through. Now, um, outliers are also called non-conformists, right? You know who else we're called non-conformists? Um, the Puritans were called non-conformists. Um, the, the, the diasporas were called, um, the diasporas were called um, outliers as well. So a non-conformist, it says that no other, no other, vers no other vers version, no matter how perfect it is, would ever feel better than being your true self. You know, that means you're not confirming, right? And these are what the outliers would be. So we must never be afraid to be a sign of contradiction for the world. That was said by Mother Teresa. A lot of us know who Mother Teresa is. So it's saying, never be afraid to contradict what the popular belief would be. Uh, uh, and, and, and so I was happy when one of the presenters said that normally the traditional style of teaching, you would see a teacher would always shut down a student, you know, saying that I am the know-all, I am the master of everything, whatever I say is final, right? And so that's, that does not allow people to shine through. You know, that diminishes... Um, individuality to excel over what a mob, um, mob mentality would look like. Now, some of the other words that we can talk about with outlier, you know, we can find here, sometimes they are called rebels, sometimes they are called free spirit, we're called uh, dissenter, unorthodox. So you will hear people say this, and when people do not understand you, they call you weird, you know, they call you um, being, uh, being unorthodox and all of that. So the point I'm trying, so I'll just finish by saying this then, you know, Again, this is a story of, this is me and my wife. Like I said, I tell stories, and I put this up just to tell you that it is perfectly okay to be different. This is an Azeri girl marrying to an African, to a Nigerian. And that has been her story, you know? She decided to do things that people would not normally do. Some people see it crazy, but again, she's been able to tell her story. People will not tell your story for you. So tell your story and let every individual shine through. Thank you very much.